All right, guys, today we are gonna be looking at a neck knife. And as you guys have, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I definitely love my neck knives. They're not necessarily always my go-tos. I do have a wide variety of blades, being a blade collector or knife collector, I do have a wide variety of knives to choose from. And sometimes belt bound knives are just simply more applicable or better suited to a particular um, job. But I do really like my neck knives. And this is a recent pickup for me. This is the Bark River Knives Rising Wolf. Now the Rising Wolf was a full production knife, but this is the prototype. So there's a few differences to my knowledge. I've never handled a full on production Rising Wolf, so I only have pictures, but things like the uh, lanyard and overall just the refining touches are slightly different on the Rising Wolf, being that this is a prototype. But this one, like I said, is a prototype, so it's a little bit off, but for the most part, it does retain the core ethos of the Rising Wolf. And what I really do like about this knife is similar to kind of my overall prerequisites for most if not all of my like go-to neck knives as I've done a breakdown of them is that I really like a thick and I really like a long handle for my neck knives. Now, of course, when it is a neck knife, you're going to be dealing with, you have to have some trade-off for overall compactness. And with the Rising Wolf, that definitely is the blade. So you guys can see here, um, it does not quite pass my um, palm and blade length. It is a more compact around three inch blade. But for me, in my opinion, I think that is totally fine and acceptable. And as I've mentioned in other videos, what I actually like about this knife and a couple of my other neck knives is that because part of the handle is also the blade or blade tang exposed, you can use that to give you just a little bit more actual batoning power. So when you are batoning, this isn't going to mean that you can baton some huge redwood tree down with this knife. Obviously, it's a compact knife you're not gonna be able to just do whatever you want with it but it does give you that extra you know maybe quarter inch of length to help span a little piece of wood and where this is actually practically useful for those you know questioning is in smaller crafting work so when you're trying to do things like making a spoon you know trying to carve out the stock for the spoon when you're trying to or not necessarily carve but um, baton out the stock for the spoon when you're trying to baton out the stock wood for something like a netting needle you know do you need a large blade to do those batoning tasks absolutely not so having that little blade that has a little bit of extra length can really come in handy so that is the kind of reason why I like uh, having a little bit of exposed blade tang actually built into the handle because once again when you're using it when you're cutting with it, it gives you that extra length in the handle but when you're batoning it gives you that little bit of extra blade length so it's a pretty cool feature um, something that I th don't think a lot of people really think about now in classical bark river knives fashion um, and once again I really do like my barkies some people don't love them but in BRK fashion you do have a really good handle it is a tapered handle so you do get a good decent grip especially toward the tail end of the blade. So it really does feel quite hand filling. And I think that's one of the big things that with some neck knives, things like the SE Azula, things like the SE3, it's kind of lost on the stock versions of those. Now granted, um, SE has since made, you know, rounded handled versions, 3D textured handled versions of things like the SE3. So you can get similar thickness and handle, but if we're talking about like a stock SE3, it has very, very thin handle slabs in a prior prioritizes ease of carry and concealment as opposed to actual usability. So for me, when I look at a neck knife, I really try to aim for something that has good handle length and good handle thickness so that it's something that's very practical for me to hold for a prolonged period of time. Because most of the time when I'm baton or um, choosing a neck knife, I should say, um, I'm going to be choosing a knife that is something that is going to be very useful, very applicable to carving and crafting. So this is the type of knife that I would use once again to make a netting needle, to feather sticks, to strike a ferro rod to start a fire. Because at the core of it, like when it comes to especially fire making, you know, I'm gonna be using my axes, my hatchets, my saws to process the wood, to buck the tree, to fell the tree, to get a tree, you know, sized, you know, like let's say five inch round, you know, piece of wood, I'm going to process it for the most part with those larger tools. But when it actually comes to feather sticking and getting the initial kindling going, that's where this guy comes in very handy. And so either, like I said, using it for kindling prep, 
fire starting, um, that's where this knife is going to shine. And then additionally, once again, with carving, making fine, intricate things like a netting needle for creating traps, for creating snares, this is going to be where it's at. So that's why I really do love to prioritize my smaller you know, neck knife styled blades and why one of my favorite go-to neck knives slash knives in general is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now, this one just so happens to be a barky as well, but really looking at it is that that, you know, size. It has a decent size, full-sized handle, full-sized, you know, th or full thickness grip, and so it's going to offer a lot of that. Now, once again, the Rising Wolf is a little bit smaller, so this is going to be for applications where you might want an even smaller knife. And in addition to being a good crafting knife, I think that this would also make a very good skin and caping style knife, and I think that's ultimately where the Rising Wolf was originally targeted for was kind of like caping skinning and doing more game processing which this would do very good at i can guarantee but um for bushcrafting and field use it also just so happens to work very well so you can see definitely a little bit more compact in overall size than something like the barky bushcrafter but still very dis very similar kind of ethos or philosophy of use pou um in the rising wolf so if you can manage to pick up one of these guys i think it's pretty cool i also like talking about you know the different knives that i collect and why i pick them up but the rising wolf is definitely a solid contender and choice and so for me this is a cool blade and i also think it's very cool that it's a prototype that adds a little bit of cool factor for me lastly you definitely have a very prototype styled sheath this could easily be a pocket knife pocket fixed blade with this style of sheath but i have made it a neck knife so you guys can see there um, and so yeah, pretty easy pretty straightforward neck knife for me to throw around and um, yeah carry it with ease so this is this is one of my top neck knives as far as what I go for to carry nowadays but it is also a solid choice in general for just a smaller use knife. And also too, I think for kind of finishing up POU, this would not be a half bad companion knife because where we start to get into just like true full on standalone neck knives is things like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter where you're starting to get into, you know, a near nine inch overall length blade. And so it's, if you can carry it, you're probably gonna be running it by itself. Whereas with the Rising Wolf, you're still small enough that this still would make a very good companion knife to say a, you know, AK, um, AK or Architect Knives AK 6.5 something like this is going to be you know a little bit large and a little bit cumbersome especially at the tip for doing very fine tasks like making a netting needle but if you run this in comparison or in tandem with something like the Rising Wolf it's going to allow you to do those smaller tasks with greater ease so anyways guys that's kind of the rundown of the Rising Wolf um, by Bark River it's a cool blade it's not once again not the most accessible but if you do find one um, I think they're totally worth it once again it's really a cool um neck knife for me and i do enjoy it i think it has a lot of use and applicability for bushcrafting and wilderness use as a whole anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless